live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2019. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services and Intel, along with its ecosystem partners. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're live here in Las Vegas in theCUBE for live coverage of Amazon reInvent 2019. I'm John Furrier here extracting the signal from the noise. We have an amazing guest here, the founder of Aviatrix, I mean CEO of Aviatrix, Steve. Melanie, welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming on. Thank you, good to see you. So first of all, I want to get into um, your experience because I think it's notable of having you on because you've been in the industry for years, you're CEO of a multi-cloud software, new, oh. a new kind of company. And this is what Andy Jassy was talking about on, the, on his keynote today, that there's new kinds of companies. There's the born in the cloud, then there's enterprises reborning in the cloud, my word. Right. But essentially pivoting or re-platforming, yeah. reimagining, whatever you want to call it. This is the new game, and if you're not on that side of the street, yeah. you could be out of business. Yeah, no, we're, we're definitely seeing that, and I think that's the thing that really got me excited about a year ago, was watching enterprises make that transition and say, you know what, the center of gravity has gone from architectures inside the on-prem data center, is now moved to in the cloud. I mean, that shift has happened, it happened, to, people talked about it five years ago, but they didn't mean it. And now when you talk to enterprises, they are actually moving into the cloud, not just talking about it, and they're saying we're, that is the center of gravity. And what's interesting to me was, I think even just the tone the, of Andy Jassy today and what he was talking about was, it's once you define what your architecture is, you push it everywhere. So cloud 1.0 and 2.0 was really more about taking my architecture that was on-prem and pushing it into the cloud. So let me take a virtual appliance, a virtual router, basically my hardware router, package it up, put it on the cloud. That's not cloud native, it's cloud naive as we talk, right? And so what's the change that's happened is now everybody realizes the center of gravity is in the cloud and you start seeing things like outposts, you see things like wavelength, you see things like um, you know, uh, TGW network manager, things getting pushed out, the architecture of the cloud now actually pushing out and extending out into on-premises. Well, I want to give you a prop for a couple things. One is, for the folks watching and read my post about, uh, with my interview with Andy Jassy, I, did two, I said two things in there that I borrowed or stole from Steve. One was, um, cloud native without the T is cloud naive. <laughs> And T for trust, T for IT. Yeah. That was clever, and we're going to get into well, that. Well, I stole that from our sales guy, Harold Hildebrand. So, you know what? Harold, Harold shout out to you. <laughs> the second thing that I heard you when we were talking, we were talking about transitions versus transformations. Right. I think that is so on point because I think that encapsulates what Jassy's saying and right. what the industry is feeling right now. Transitions are for incremental improvements. Right. Transformations are for flipping the script. Right. right. This is really happening. Can you share yeah. what you mean by transitions versus transformations? Yeah, so when you're in a computing model, so, so I, there's been really three computing models. There's the mainframe, which was 50s or 60s to 80s to 90s. There's a 20, 30 year period where IBM, DEC, and so forth. That was the way you did enterprise computing. Um, then this PC client server thing came along, which was viewed as a toy at the beginning. It was for print sharing and work groups, and people said, are you kidding me? PCs, the servers are just PCs with two power supplies. I'm not running my mission critical infrastructure on PCs. But in the 90s, with the, with the internet, IP protocol, it, it shifted, and that, and that became that transformation. And so, incumbents never win transformations. DEC, IBM, and what happens is, they're never in the conversation, because it's a transformation. So, incumbents always win transitions. So for the last 20 to 30 years, Cisco, great, fantastic company. You know, very respected company. John Chambers would talk about transitions and talk about how we would pat himself on the back and how they would win market transitions. You're supposed to win a market transition as an incumbent. Don't pat yourself on the back. The customers will force you to win the transition because they don't want another leader when you're in that same model. We are now entering that third transformation, that third, this is a model of computing change. This is a, from the top down, business transformation Andy was talking about, which is true. You have companies redefining who they are and they're leveraging cloud technologies to do that. This is not a cost thing. 
This is not a bottoms up technology thing that IT guys just say, ah, oh, let's, I want to learn something new. This is top down business transformation, you know, uh, you know, existential threat to the survival of my company kind of stuff, and we need to move fast. And, and enterprises all move together, and, and, and yeah. that's now happening. And transformations, that confusion creates opportunities yeah. because it moves so fast that the, the legacy vendors just don't have time. Yeah. They have the innovator's dilemma. They can't move to the new way quick enough. Yeah, and one of the things I want to get your thoughts on, I want to get your reaction to, is that uh, as we go to the, all the events and cloud and in this business, we see everything. The one tell sign to me is the security market. Security got unbuckled out of IT, mm -hmm. became a board conversation, and the jewels are on the table for security. You get hacked, you're out of business. So right. talk about threats to the business. Right. Security right. is right. the leading indicator. And what's going on in security? They're building their own stacks. They're hiring developers in-house. They are really changing the game on how they use yeah. technology. That's just in one area. You're talking about oh, everything. complete reset or yeah. reconsideration of everything, as Jassy said. Everything. Yeah, it's the business, right? Your applications are your business, right? And then, and then all the infrastructure underneath that is there to service the applications and the data. That's, that's why it's there. But you know, when you talk to different people and you talk to you know, um, customers like you know, NBC and CBS and content people, they're moving to the cloud. They're, you know, they're, they're now having channels that are 100% hosted on AWS for the first time. Why are you doing that? I asked this of, of, of uh, CBS because we need to move faster. Guess what, they're, they're competing with, with, with Netflix and, and Amazon. They can't do it the old way, they're going to die. So they're moving all of their channels, hundreds of channels, to be now cloud enabled because it allows them to deliver it in months as opposed to years. You're a really interesting background, I'll share with the audience, you have a networking background, the old Wellfleet became Bay Networks, early employee at, um, uh, you're at Cisco, and then went to early employee at Palo Alto, Palo Alto Networks, Networks, security company, uh, CEO of Nicira, which yep. is a pioneer in software-defined networking, yes. which at the time evolved in, this basically became the crown jewel save VMware. Yep, uh, NSX. And I would, you would say I would agree with that. Um, and now you're on AVHs where it's got a multi-cloud abstraction, so you're kind of riding this new wave. Right. So the question I have for you is, and I, I coined the term being reborn in the cloud, not born in the cloud. Right. People were born in the cloud, clean sheet of paper, right. they can scale up, but an enterprise has got to transform, has yeah. to become reborn yes. with cloud architecture. Yes. This is a fundamental, almost look in the mirror moment as an enterprise yeah. executive saying, yeah. are we being reborn? Yes. How do companies do that? So we have a number of companies, uh, co uh, enterprise companies that are 30 year, 40 year old enterprise software companies that honestly were left for dead, right? where people thought they, they weren't SaaS, they missed out on the whole you know, Benioff SaaS movement, and they were on-prem, they had all the features, all the functionality, but they didn't have the delivery model of SaaS. And they were hurting, they were going to die. People left them for dead. And now what they're doing is they've reborn themselves in the cloud. They're pushing themselves in the cloud. Informatica, Verint, Epsilon, Illusion, Teradata. We've got tens of these companies that are have reinvented themselves, and now they're actually really doing really, really well because they have the functionality that they've always had, but now they have the delivery mechanism. And they're not SaaS, actually, and the customers like that yeah. because I get my own three or four VPCs, it's my own network, it's not multi-tenant, it's, it's hosted within AWS, and now they're just migrating yeah. as fast as they can, all of their on-prem, applications and customers into AWS and other clouds. All right, so I got to ask about multi-cloud. Jassy didn't use the word multi-cloud. The critics are, are kind of tweeting away on that, but of course they're not going to say multi-cloud. He's the cloud. Yeah. So he's the one cloud yeah. he wants to be. Yeah. But multi-cloud is a reality. Yeah. Uh, he did point out in my interview, and I think he might have mentioned on stage that people are picking a primary and a secondary, and then it's not 50-50, it's 70-30, 90-10. Right. Whatever the ratio is, it's, right. it's pick one. Right. Amazon gets picked a lot through the leader. Yeah. What's your vision and how do you see the multi-cloud playing out as people start yeah. becoming more so cloud I, operations based? My, my, my view and people, we are in the first pitch of the first inning of this cloud and people say AWS is a $40 billion run rate, how can that be? Because the money has always been and always will be with large enterprise. They are now just starting to move into the cloud. There is trillions of dollars of spend that's coming into public cloud. So one of, first off, it's very beginning early days. 
Uh, second thing is, is, is AWS has done incredibly well with the developers and the, and the, and the born in the cloud people. Enterprises, you know. So much. Not so much, yeah, and you know yeah. what? Microsoft kind of understands enterprises. So I think we're going to be set up for a little bit of battle here, um, and it's by no means over. Um, and, I, and, 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 and so, you know, I think AWS recognizes that, and every single enterprise I've talked to says, yeah, it may not be a third, a third, a third across all three of the big clouds, so maybe I'll have one primary, and I think kind of Andy Jassy says that, which I kind of agree with. I think people will have a primary, but I don't think everyone's primary is going to be AWS. I think there's going to be a lot of Azure primaries, and even some Google primaries, right? Probably more, I think it'll be a two horse race for that, and then, but then they're going to use the other clouds because, you know, I was just talking to a customer today, um, the, the, the signature recognition software runs better in Azure. They're an AWS customer. They're, they're moving to Azure for this. Why? Because that app runs better in Azure for some reason. I think people, and particularly enterprises, will make that decision. All right, so I got to get, get your take on uh, two things. First of all, I agree so with you. I think that's what will happen. All right, so I, I would agree with that. So let's just take the scenario. Amazon wins on capabilities. They're constantly adding new stuff every day. So if you're a builder, it's the ultimate tool shed for technology. Right. Azure isn't there yet. They're trying to catch up as fast as they can. They're pedaling as fast as they can. But there's a, there's, a, there's a build out level and then there's a consumption level. Mm -hmm. So there's having all that capability, yeah. but also the customer's consumption has to be addressed. Solutions packaging, right. um, ease of use. Right. So delivery mechanisms to infrastructure in the cloud. Yeah. The consumption, how I buy and use, yeah. is now a consideration or consumer experience, whatever yeah. you want to call it. Yeah. What's your take on those two so dynamics? I, I, think, I think you'll see uh, from AWS, I don't know this, but I just it has to be because this is what enterprises want. The phrase go build is great for an early adopter. You go tell that to an enterprise, here's the power tools, go build your house. They go, I'm going to cut my hand off. I don't want to go build anything, I want to consume. So, I, I think you're going to see them changing their tune a little bit because the market's evolved and I think it's caught them a little bit by surprise as well. And, and I think Microsoft, because they know the enterprise, they won't say go build. They're going to say come consume. And I think that's going to resonate with enterprises because at the end of the day they don't really want to do that. Now, either way I think, I think, I think it's going to be a battle. That's where Aviatrix comes into play. We help enterprises, no matter what cloud you're on, across multiple clouds or one, actually consume services. So we abstract away all the details of those native services. Well I would say if you're going to transform, you have to do some building, but it has to be the easy kit. You know, yeah, paint I, by I, numbers. I want the easy button. You know, I mean, paint, paint by numbers, yeah. self-installing house. So I got your take on that. So you, you, you got a lot of buzz in the uh, analyst community uh, around a phrase you, uh, you've, I've heard you say, which one called, was that? Called, <laughs> there's no more food left in the data uh, center. Okay, yeah. So, and the animals are leaving the data yeah, center. That's food right. being the yeah, supplier, the on-prem data the on center. On-prem money and the yeah. animals being the, the vendors. Yeah, right. So if there's no food in the data center, what's happening? What does that mean? They're going to, it's, it's the center of gravity's moved into the cloud. That's where the food is. So you're going to see a lot of, you know, cloud naive legacy vendors put cloud on things, right? It's the same crap they had. They're just going to put cloud on it because, like I said, there's, what do, what do animals do when the rot of food? They they go find where the food is, right? And so, <laughs> you know, and, and people get mad when I say that because they go, oh, data centers aren't going away. No, I know the data centers aren't going away, but they're going to get quarantined, like mainframes got quarantined. It's going to be a, an expense area. It's not going to be an investment. And what do you do in an expense? You quarantine it, you cap it, you hopefully keep it flat or you reduce it. But sure, the data centers are going to be around for a long time, but all their market caps are all based on big growth. And where people are confused is for the last five years, everybody said we're moving to cloud, but they were talking. And so if you look over the last five years, all the people selling to on-prem have done very well. So clearly this whole cloud thing was a hoax, right? Because for five years, you've said it was coming and it hasn't. So therefore, I'm good. The problem is you're good right up until you're not good. <laughs> and that just happened. And that's happening now in your and opinion. It's happening now, and you're seeing it in people's results publicly, and they're, they're washing it over, saying it's a temporary problem, I compensated the field wrong, bullshit. 
I know what's going on. And you know what? There's going to be no hiding from that. Yeah, and the expansion is going to be in the cloud where there's developers where, are building apps that's where that drive all top the line. Investments going, 100%. All right. So, okay, so there's major, a couple major areas developing with the cloud dynamic cloud scale, yep. and now data tsunami and data scale, diversity of data, and all those things are happening. You can see that in the announcements large scale data, the data layer now, data ops, data as code, infrastructure as code, large scale, all that's great but networking still becomes the fundamental problem. Jassy talked about it on stage, yeah. hops to the network, they got this oh, yeah. wavelength thing for 5G, yeah. that's really cool. All the kind of important things that are going on is going on at the network. Same concepts yeah. being applied yeah. to a new architecture. Yeah. Your thoughts. That's exactly right. Uh, one of our customers, I, I forget who it was, said a phrase to me that I love. Again, I steal everything, John. He <laughs> said, the network comes first. I steal from, from you. Yeah, the <laughs> network comes first. I go, that is perfect, I'm going to use that. In fact, actually, it's on our website. The network comes first, because when you're building out that infrastructure, in all of computing, compute, network, and storage, what's the most important? Network, by far. Why? Because if the network isn't architected correctly, you're screwed for life. So you got to get that right. And so that's what everybody's doing right now, is they look and they say, strategically, we're going to go build a city, First thing I got to go and do is get the basic infrastructure and the network comes first. That is the core of my basic infrastructure. If you get that wrong, life is bad for a long, long time. Okay. That's, that's what's going on right okay, now, so, so he's right. You've had a great career, you got the CEO of Aviatrix going on. You're also uh, been looking at startups, you advise, been on boards. Yep. What's your view of the startup landscape? If you're advising startups to go at this market, this trillion dollar market, enterprise market, that's being, the money's yep. being thrown in the air, and the money's in the middle of the table. Yeah. Everyone's I would say, how, do, how do they attack that money? How do they attack the marketplace? Yeah. The first thing, number one, you got to be cloud native. Like, you have got to understand the basic native constructs of Azure, Google, AWS. You, you cannot be just this thing that plops on top of it. You've got to be able to programmatically program that infrastructure and leverage it. Because all the hundreds of billions of dollars being spent, you want to use that. Right, you don't want to have to go recreate that. So that, that to me is number one. Um, and, then, and then number two, I think there's a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of opportunity in the cloud. Everybody thinks AWS will do anything and everything you need in networking. That is a bunch of crap. There's no, there's so many limitations that they have for enterprises, like hundreds of limitations. That The beautiful thing of networking is you push one area and 10 other problems happen. So we've got 20 years of things to do to make networking better. Um, and, and so that's what we're going to do, but also at the edges, right? I would say where the, where the interesting thing happens is the interface between on-prem and cloud. So BGP, iOS, Cisco IOS, all the things that, that because it's kind of like the virtual to physical interface. It's the cloud to on-prem interface. There's still going to be an interface. Still need and plumbing. You still and, and and there's still going to be an interface. That interface is where a lot of the complexity and friction comes. So there's so whether it's IoT edge computing type things or things that we do of bringing that cloud in a seamless kind of simple automated way and and bringing on the on-prem into the cloud world in a very uh, my, you know seamless way. So I got to ask you a final question. You came out of retirement. You had the yep. good life on boards, yep. dolphin clipping coupons, going to the beach every day. Um, now you're the CEO of a company grinding it out again. Yeah. A lot of older ageism kind of coming back in the business. A lot of people who have been in the systems business. Oh yeah. A lot of people coming back in the game. Yeah. Why did you come back? What was the main driver for you to come out of retirement? Because this is a thousand foot wave and it's, it's 10 times bigger than, than what I saw in client server. It's the biggest opportunity of value creation and innovation that I've ever seen and ever will see in my life. Um, and what's also fun is every single one of the customers that we're dealing with are all old guys like me. They're all 40s, 50s, 60s. It's the IT guys from 30 years ago that everyone left for dead and everyone thought, oh, it's, it's the developer, developer-led infrastructure. The developers are going to do everything. Uh-uh, this is, this is IT. IT is coming back and said, thank you very much, developer. We got it from here. This is serious business now. This isn't fun and games anymore. We're taking over. But it's serious IT, it's reborn IT, it's not serious. the old IT. Not the Just old to be IT. Clear. They want to do it, so they, it's, it's the old guys, but they're enlightened guys and gals, and they want to do it in the cloud way with the simplicity and the automation, 
but yet I want to bring the functionality, the visibility and control that I had on-prem. I don't want to do it the old way, I want to do it the new way. Guy today, we're just talking to a customer said, I don't want to, do, I don't want to build my dad's network. But he's 50 years old, right? He's <laughs> my age, you know? And so, but I, I think that's the, that's the king. They're enlightened, yeah. they're enlightened networking people, but yet they have the 30 years of history of understanding the subtleties of BGP and networking. It's our 10th year doing theCUBE, we had such a great time, our team's awesome. It's our eighth, it's eighth, seventh year doing reInvent, eight years total to this conference. What's your take of Jassy's keynote this year? Is this an inflection uh, point? Yeah. Is this one of those moments where you're going to look back and say, this was a, a time that Amazon made a change or gassed it extra hard? Or yeah, I, 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 I take? think, I, my take is, look, every year he says amazing things and, and every year is, a, is another uh, you know, step function. But I think this year will go down as the year that people will look back a couple years from now and say, that was the point that it, it got serious, like really serious, I mean, in terms of big enterprises coming in. And I think it's going to send a message to the other public clouds and a, and a message to all the other enterprises that say, hey, uh, maybe I'm falling behind. Like when you see Goldman Sachs and you see, and banks are laggards to the cloud. They're not early adopters, they're laggards. And you see that and you go, well, wait a minute, maybe I'm missing out. I, I, I think it's going to actually accelerate because of what, he, what he's, because he's seeing it, you know? So I, I think it will go down as a big inflection point. Steve Mullaney, president and CEO of Aviatrix, who's going to, you'll be on Thursday, we'll go over some of the stuff you guys are doing as a company. Yes. Appreciate the commentary uh, and great experience riding the wave. Yep. How high was that wave? A thousand, thousand foot. foot wave. <laughs> We've been riding this wave for years. What a great, great time it is to be here at reInvent. It's theCUBE coverage, I'm John Furrier. We'll be back with more coverage after this short break. Here in theCUBE, Intel Studios, sponsored by Intel. Thanks to Intel for your generous contribution to making theCUBE and supporting our mission. We really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with more coverage after this short break.